In this video we are going to take a closer look at uh, SOG or SOG a pillar a US made tactical slash survival knife of sorts I guess you could call it uh, they do make uh, a lot of different knives both uh, fixed blades but also folding knives I'm not sure if they are all US made though but this one is definitely made in the in the US and it is, if I did not state it, my first experience with this specific uh, brand and, uh, well, maker of sorts. Uh, I've known about them for many, many years, uh, but this was the first, you know, knife that I felt I was, you know, kind of curious about and really wanted to, to try out. So it is, uh, it's a bit, you know, long overdue, perhaps you could say. So we're going to do a bit of an unboxing here to begin with. Uh, this is what the box looks like. It's not a whole lot going on here. There's a bit of a stamp mark. And then we have a bit of text here on the side, which pretty much states that this is the yeah, made in the US pillar satin S35VN USA steel Kydex sheath. So uh, let's, uh, let's open it up, I guess. And we are instantly greeted by the, the knife itself in this sort of plastic yeah, protection thing here. And with a small tip protector I see as well. So let's, uh, let's unbox the knife here, shall we? Um, yeah, we are obviously going to get back to the knife, but I'm going to put it aside just for now so we can look at the additional contents here in the... And the box. So here we have the Kydex sheath. Very bare, <laughs> I'd say, or clean. Um, got a SOG stamp on it as well. And we also have some, I guess this is the locking mount. Uh, for the sheath inside this bag and well an additional bag in the bag with some screws so we can attach it to the to the actual sheath uh, and this works the way let's see right now it is now it is in the locked position you will not be open to able to open it up but if you slide this down and press it down it opens uh, the locking mechanism here. Uh, safety on, not going anywhere. Quite a, you know, a smart system in my opinion. I like this one. I had this, or I have this for a few of my other uh, Kydex sheath for some other knives from other makers. But this is sort of universal, I'd say. Uh, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna put it on right away, but just you know, showing what is included. Uh, I will attach it later on so we can take a look at it in the video itself. So let's take a look here at the knife itself. We can go over the, the numbers uh, and then we can take a closer look at some of the design features, the grind lines and so on. Uh, but let's start here with, should I perhaps zoom in the camera I will do that. Yeah, this should be slightly better. So we have a total length, an overall length of 251 millimeters, so about 25 centimeters. We have a um, blade length of 127 millimeters, so that is 12.7 centimeters. We have a blade thickness or spine thickness of, I believe, four millimeters. One would have thought, you know, it could be a thicker blade, you know, given that it is a more tactical or combat oriented or you know, survival knife, but I'm quite glad they, they went with four millimeters. Uh, there are plenty of thick knives out there. So having some variety uh, is, in my opinion, a good thing. 
Uh, much as like I stated, it is made in USA with CPM S35VN uh, steel. The scales are micarta. I would say they are a mix of like black and green micarta. There is some, it looks like sort of layering, uh, but I'm not quite sure what exact colors are used, but micarta it is. Uh, it is a obviously a clip point design with a flat grind. We have some, well, a bit of a swedge sort of swedge going on here, but it's not really a thin one at that. Let's see if we can get, you know, a look at the spine here, how it works. Some nice uh, grind lines in my opinion. We have a bit of, uh, or well, we have a lot of jimping going on here. Uh, not, you know, super aggressive or, well, not super sharp, but you definitely get a, a good grip here, uh, placing the thumb like this. Uh, you do get, yeah, quite a good grip. But it's, as you can see, it's sort of, uh, well, semi-thick. Uh, and there's also some, some jimping or grooves made here in the actual scales themselves. There's also a bit of a strange looking finger choil. I mean, finger choils are usually rounded a bit more. As you can see here, this one is more straight. But in terms of ergos, it does feel, you know, doesn't feel too bad. Uh, I would perhaps have preferred a more rounded choil, but I'm just happy that it is a full finger choil and not just, you know, some sort of sharpening choil or something, you know, that is, you know, f too small to actually be used. Uh, so I do, I do appreciate that they made it, you know, full, full finger. That I've got to say. So on the backhand here of the handle we have a sort of an extended lanyard hole. Also a bit interesting in shape. They are usually more round perhaps. Not that it really matters uh, that much. We also have this back part here uh, which I guess could be used to well I don't know hit someone in the head with it. Use it as a skull crusher or something like that. Uh, I wear size 10 in gloves, fairly large hands, placing the knife in my hand. We have plenty of uh, blade length. In fact, I can hold the knife without even using the, the finger groove here. And finger grooves are sometimes a bit tricky because they are not always universal to all hands. But as you can see here, it works quite nice in my hand. It's also semi nicely rounded here, so there are no like sharp edges, even if I should, you know, have to place my finger sort of on this area, it will not be, you know, much of an issue. Uh, but it feels surprisingly nice in my hand, uh, also with the jimping here. But you can, of course, go with uh, more precision grip here using the, the finger choil. For those who appreciate that. You also get a nice thumb placement using this grip and since there is not you know too fine of a swedge, uh, placing your thumb up here does feel quite you know quite comfortable. So did I miss mentioning anything? Yeah the weight of the knife is 207 grams. Yeah, about 200 grams. Uh, Putting the knife in a reverse grip, yeah, that's, that could actually explain sort of this jimping here as well, you know, uh, getting a good grip in, in reverse. It does feel, yeah, feels pretty good. Even if you place your thumb here, if you just place it like this, a reverse grip will work. I rarely, I never use my knives in a reverse grip, but I guess a situation could arise where one would want to hold the knife like this. Balance point 
could be something that could be of some interest, I guess. So this is where we find the balance point on this model. So it is a bit back heavy. So my first, you know, initial impressions uh, doing this unboxing, unboxing, checking out the knife like this, uh, I get a pretty nice impression. I mean, the knife is is not overly expensive, so I wasn't quite sure what to to expect. But I mean, uh, the steel used, um, or well, the overall materials used, uh, are all you know quality stuff. So, but then we have the you know the grinds. The sharpness, the ergos, uh, all the design aspects, etc. But my initial impressions are are quite good. A rounded choil would have been nice. Perhaps the only thing that I feel you know I'm could have liked, but it doesn't really matter much. And if you are using gloves, then it would matter you know even less. So I guess that's it for the for the overview for the you know. For the specs, the numbers, and all that. If I fail to mention that, this is a sort of a stonewashed finish, I, I would say. It might, well, it did say satin on the box, but I mean, I would definitely say that it's not, you know, not a satin finish, it's more of a stonewashed finish. I'm not sure how it transfers to the camera, but in my opinion, as you can see, this is more. Definitely more of a stone wash than a true satin finish. That's it for the unboxing part. Next up, we're gonna do some sharpness tests to see how the edge uh, holds up. I think I got a little bit carried away because we should have looked at uh, the Kydex sheath, you know, the retention, if there's any rattling, etc. I just uh, put um, uh, put um, locking system on here. Uh, you will carry, or I will carry it in a scout position. I think that is, you know, how it will work best, uh, given how you can utilize uh, the holes here and the locking mechanism itself. So in terms of any rattling to begin with, no rattling, that is a good sign, uh, I'd say. The retention is it's pretty good. Or is it? So I would say that the, the retention is perhaps not the uh, best that I've seen, but at least it's not, you know, you, I'm not able to shake it out like that, but it, retention could be, I would say, slightly better. I can still, you know, it doesn't take too much of an effort to remove the knife. Um, yeah, so the retention is perhaps not the, the very best, but it's not, you know, crap either. On a scale from 1 to 10, I would rate it perhaps a, uh, I'm not sure, a 5, perhaps. Rattling, well, that's a 10 out of 10, there is no rattling. So that is it for the Kydex sheath aspect, scout carrying. Now we can proceed to some actual uh, sharpness testing. We have now reached the uh, first sharpness test and I have a very specific procedure of doing this. And that is that I usually start off by slicing some different types of paper. Uh, so we're gonna try slicing one or two uh, printing papers. We're gonna slice some uh, magazine paper. Then we're gonna finish it off by slicing some uh, newspaper paper. And all of these types of paper, they pose different kinds of challenges for, 
for the knife and the edge. And interestingly enough, uh, we're gonna start with this now, but interesting, interestingly enough, uh, the printing paper sometimes pose the most challenge for certain types of, of knives or edges. I'm not quite sure why that is, maybe because it is non-laminated, then again, this too is very non-laminated and very thin. Uh, anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's proceed and see what we can uh, accomplish using the pillar. So, I mean, it is, uh, well, obviously it is uh, printing paper slicing sharp, but it may not be, you know, the absolute finest cuts, but it definitely, I mean, it definitely cuts the paper. So, um, and this is the factory edge. Um, Uh, now we actually got some issues. Well, I mean, it will slice printing paper, you know, fairly well. I mean, this is not bad in any way, uh, but I could feel like, you know, there, sometimes the cuts were pretty clean, sometimes they were a bit... Uh, less clean but all in all it definitely 100% passes the printing paper uh, test and then we're off to the magazine I can see that this has been wet and then dried up a bit so I'm not sure if that's gonna have an effect uh, oh we'll just give it a go I think So, um, still like this. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of sharp, I'd say. I'm gonna switch magazine for my next video because this paper has been wet and then dried and I think that might have some sort of an effect. Um. Yeah. And now I realize I'm not sure if I have had it in the camera while slicing. Hopefully it's been visible, otherwise we can do some additional slicing here real fast. Now it's definitely gonna be in the camera, so. Yeah, so it will definitely slice um, magazine paper as can be seen from all the, the pieces of paper here so it passes the magazine slicing test with uh, with ease and that means that we have now reached um, newspaper slicing test which could perhaps be one of the more interesting ones uh, i reckon Let's go with one piece, it's all from the same newspaper. I'll make sure it's visible in the camera. Hmm, well. 
well, well. So I mean obviously it will it will slice the newspaper but perhaps not uh, super cleanly um, So, well, it, it will, I, I'm gonna say that it passes the, the newspaper, newspaper slicing test, but uh, perhaps not with, with ease, but it's still, you know, as can be seen here, it will still slice the paper. So, so my opinion is that this knife is sharp. It will slice all types of paper, perhaps not flawlessly, but it is paper slicing sharp. No doubt about that. Here is a little bonus segment I just thought of, and that is cutting some uh, some small pieces of leather to see how it performs. Uh, so let's let's try that, perhaps. See how we can make it visible in the camera. Uh, just don't like you know. So, cutting leather is not too difficult. Uh, I actually get some, some fairly you know, fine cuts. Uh, just, you know, a bit bonus cutting. I, we can't only be cutting paper, can we? Yeah. Now we are going to do some uh, feather sticks and I provided two pieces of wood here which I think should you know be good for for making feathers. Uh, I might be wrong but hopefully we can uh, you know get some some nice feathers uh, from them. So let's uh, let's start using at least one of these two pieces to see what we can accomplish. And this should be perhaps better if I stand like this, I guess. I guess we're gonna remove that and then we can work, you know, our way in. So it bites kind of deep right now. I mean, these feathers are... Well, I mean, they would be useful, but... To actually get a fire started, you know, with a... Um, with a fire steel, 
we do want some some you know finer feathers than this but let's let's go with this for now uh, like thicker feathers of sorts and then we can try to make some you know more uh, fine feathers with that other piece of wood right or hopefully we can let's put this aside for now see with what we can accomplish with a little bit less uh, you know pressure perhaps you could say and a slightly different angle placement I mean, these sorts of curls is what I want to see more of. And there's only like, well, one right now here, so. Or two. But it kind of want to bite. In fact, the whole piece of wood is kind of... Maybe we should go from the other side. I mean... Maybe... Give me a second here. I mean, we are getting some nice curls, but they are falling off, and I kind of want to, you know, keep them here on the on the stick of wood. So, I mean, these are uh, the finer kind of feathers uh, that I was looking for. We also got some of them here uh, because they, you know, they fall off. But I mean, regardless, they will still be able to be uh, to be put to use. I'm gonna remove that one. See if we can start over. Perhaps over here. So we are getting some some more well pretty 
semi thick feathers but we can take a look at at these first oops oh, getting stuck in my in my gloves but you know we are getting some decently sized feathers so if we were to make a fire we would go with them first then we could also put some of these you know more well larger feathers as well and then perhaps we could have you know scraped off some uh, using the spine here to get like you know some really really super fine small you know tinder like that or tinder not tinder but small yeah wood fragments <laughs> micro wood fragments maybe we could have tried some different types of wood as well um. you know these kind of flat trying to just you know scrape something off here ah well Maybe these pieces of woods were not, you know, optimal for uh, for making feathers, but we still managed to get, you know, well, something that would, you know, see me work at least. We would just need, well, a bit more if we were to make an actual fire here. Yesterday we did some uh, feather sticking, we did some batoning, some carving. I wasn't you know, completely satisfied with the feather sticking segment, so I thought we could try another piece of wood here and see if we can make some slightly finer feathers. Uh, but I guess we'll just have to uh, uh, see. I think that I, I really do lack uh, good pieces of wood here to make, make nice feathers. Uh, but yeah, I mean it is, it sort of is what it is, I'd say. So, uh, yeah, lots of curls that are falling off. We are getting some, you know, slightly, you know, finer curls this time around. Perhaps I don't even remember what they looked like yesterday. This isn't, you know, overly impressive. But I will say that, you know, I, if I had some better pieces of wood to work with, we would see. Uh, well, simply put, we would see better results as well.
very uneven pieces of wooden. This is actually there's a crack going through the entire piece of wood, so that's making it even less uh, good. Well, I might just have to realize that uh, I won't be able to make a good uh, feather sticking segment here. Uh, since all these pieces of wood just doesn't want to work with me here. We have a completely different piece of wood uh, as well. But I doubt we will get any nice results from that one either. So. So this is where we are currently at. This is totally out of focus, perhaps. Uh, we are getting some, well, some decent curls at least. Um, see if I can get some more real faster before we actually remove them from the... Yeah. Take them off now. So. Uh, all in all, what did we end up with here? So, a bit of this and that, I'd say. So, uh, yeah, I mean, will it work? Yeah, it will work. Is it great? Well, it's not really great, but it's functional. That is what it is, functional. And well, I didn't bring a fire steel, but we would have been able to get a fire going here uh, using this. And that is uh, for sure. So I've been playing around a bit with this knife uh, now, but I guess it could have been a good idea to also record uh, what I am doing. So let's uh, let's do some um, additional batoning now. Um, let's go with this piece first. Kind of a tall piece of wood. some other types of wood 
with different thickness here as well. Can we go like this? No, nope. too little blade length. small crack in the wood so might as well utilize that. Yeah this should work. I reckon. I would say that these are, you know, pretty decently sized for uh, for fire starting, you know, wood pieces. Could perhaps make some, you know, even even thinner at that. But you know, pretty much a, a solid size for getting those fires started. And then we have some, well, slightly longer and larger pieces here as well. So my awesome batoning hammer so that is you know how we make some small small kindling uh, to make our fire work out yeah so we have done some feathers we have done some batooning, now I thought we could do some light carving uh, of one of the pieces that we batooned through here. And I want to make, uh, you know, a thin spear point on this uh, piece of, of wood here. So that is what we're going to try to uh, try to do now.
This is the thickness we started out with. This is uh, where we are now. So I guess it will kind of carve. Yep. Pretty good job, I'd say. We have now reached the final part of the video, which is yeah, my final thoughts and conclusions about the SOG, the SOG Pillar, uh, the US made tactical slash survival knife in CPM S35EN. So we started the video out by, you know, shoving the knife out in the woods, uh, getting a good, you know, view of all the, you know, design aspects and details. Uh, we then uh, did a small overview, uh, going through the specs and yeah, doing the unboxing and, and all of that. And once we were done with that, we started doing some sharpness tests and my typical test as well, uh, slicing three different kinds of paper, which it did uh, fairly well. Uh, we also uh, sliced some leather, which it also did you know fairly well. I did not include a uh, and a hair shaving segment, I believe. But if I don't misremember, I actually... I was going to record it. I didn't have a lot of leg hair left to remove, but I did record something. But it did not... It didn't shave uh, the hair very well. Uh, I realize now that I should have probably included that segment, but uh, well, for some reason I decided to not add it into the video and I'm not gonna add it you know now that the video is almost completed but I will say that it didn't shave hair very well uh, with the factory edge you can of course you know put it on a strop and you know or just the edge a bit uh, to get it you know hair shaving sharp or even hair popping sharp should you want to uh, Anyways, after we had done some of the different sharpness tests, we went out and uh, did some feathers. And well, the feathering part, I think there were two parts because I didn't really, you know, I wasn't really satisfied with, with the first part uh, of feather sticking. But not, you know, perhaps due to the knife itself, but more due to the piece of wood that I used. And also the wood I used for the second part wasn't perhaps the best either. Uh, so it would probably have been better to actually go out in the woods and uh, uh, find some, you know, semi-medium sized twigs and sticks, branches, uh, to have done some feathering on, on those instead. I will do that with future videos. Uh, we also didn't do any, you know, any uh, notching or anything like that. So, but I, I will say right away that the knife, it will, of course, work, you know, doing notches. Uh, and we did do feathers at home, at least. Uh, perhaps not the absolute finest feathers, but we did do make, you know, functional feathers. We also did some batooning. Uh, eh, not that, that hard. Uh, and we also did some, yeah, some sort of random wood carving. Uh, which it performed, you know, pretty well as well. So I mean, we could have done, we could have done more. I will do more. I mentioned it in my previous video that I am, you know, gonna rework or refine the, the whole uh, video review structure of sorts so that is in the, in 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 the pipeline, so to say. Uh, but all in all, I mean, this is a, I think it is a a nice, a nice knife in some good materials in terms of steel and, and scales. Uh, the Kydex sheath is, like I said, you know, the retention really is, you know, 
uh, not the best. I mean, it doesn't take you know, a lot of effort to actually uh, get the knife out. I don't think I can shake it out. Perhaps I can. Well, I mean, it is. At least I can't shake it loose, and that is a good thing. But it's not, you know, it's not a super tough retention. Uh, that much I can say. Uh, so uh, the knife itself, you know, having worked a lot with uh, with uh, uh, ANV M311 uh, Spelter and this, you know, side by side doing the videos, uh, they really are very different knives. And I want to focus on this knife because this is the the SOG video. This is not the the M311 video, but it is, you know. I, I kind of have to mention it uh, regardless. Both of them being really good knives, uh, really nice knives, but also very, you know, different knives. Uh, I will say that, you know, the Argos on this one is, it, it's, you know, pretty nice actually. Uh, quite a thin handle, uh, lots of, you know, small um, mill parts or whatever you want to call it. Uh, or some, you know, texturing, but not, you know, uncomfortable, and with gloves, you know, it, eh, I mean, it's, it's not like it's giving me any hot spots or anything without gloves. I've been using this knife with and without gloves. So, uh, it is it is a nice, you know, eh, it's got a nice feel to it, but a, a rather thin, uh, non-contoured handle. The jimping is on the right place. Uh, and with, with the right amount of you know roughness uh, and grip to it. The choil, like I mentioned, I do like a full finger choil and I can actually place my finger here. It is, it's sort of, you know, kind of almost going into the cutting, uh, cutting edge, uh, but not, you know, yeah, if you have a bit more beefier or fat fingers than I do, then it might be an issue, and I still find you know the the straight, non you know non rounded, choil here to be a little bit you know off, but still you know functional. Uh, that much I can say. Um, so a nice, a nice knife, in, in a good steel, uh, pretty decent performance. Uh, Pretty decent factory edge as well, could have been slightly sharper. Uh, the spine thickness could have been, you know, for batooning and stuff like that, actually we could have we could have used a, a slightly, you know, uh, slightly thicker spine for that. Uh, I think it would have batooned uh, even better. Then again, I mean, it all depends on what kind of, you know, wood pieces you are batooning. And like I stated, or well, I hope I stated it, in the, Batooning segment that you know I when I do batoon I usually go for smaller pieces of wood uh, you know something to get a fire start I don't go for like super thick pieces of like logs or anything because that is why I have uh, several axes a few hatchets etc uh, so for smaller batooning uh, it will work you know just fine and the steel I do like CPM S thirty five VN so. That is a, a good choice, uh, I'd say. But I, I just got to mention this and, uh, and show it as well. I mean, this is the salt pillar video and all that. But you know, having worked with with these two knives, I should have, you know, in in the A and V M three eleven video, I should have mentioned this one. I should have, you know, in the final thoughts and conclusion, etc. Uh, but I, you know, I'd, I'd rather do it now than. Not at all. So, just to get a, a bit, you know, of a, of a uh, sense of size, etc. Let's let's take a look here at the, the handles. Uh, just you know, just for fun here. You know the the difference in, you know, thickness of handle. So let's do like this. And then we do like that. I hope it's you know kind of you know visible and obvious how much thicker this handle is compared to the very slim. So I mean it's it is it's kind of interesting I think because this is a very slim handle uh, with a slightly thinner 
edge, uh, not edge, uh, slightly thinner, you know, spine, um, spine thickness too. But in terms of, you know, handle size, this one shocked, not shocked me, but I was surprised, you know, how, how slim the knife is. And I feel like this knife is, it feels smaller than it is, lighter than it is, you know, it feels like, uh, you know, when I, if, if, if I was shown a photo of this knife, I would have thought it was, you know, larger. And that doesn't mean that this is, you know, a, a bad thing that it was, you know, lighter, smaller, etc. Uh, because it is nice to have a, a you know, light carrying option uh, with the, the properties of this knife and this, you know, the general design uh, specifically. Uh, but, you know, a really slim knife, that is how I would, you know, would want to call it, a slim survival slash tactical knife. With this one being, you know, the beefiest handle uh, out of all my, you know, knives, pretty much. Um, but in terms of, you know, actual, you know, uh, edge length, I mean, just very, very different, um, different designs uh, all together. Um, It's kind of you know misleading uh, not having the camera placed directly on top here because you know the perspective will get kind of strange. But it, it, it has been you know an interesting experience working side by side with these two knives uh, shot in the videos simultaneously uh, because they are you know they are in the same survival tactical you know category. Uh, some interesting grind lines some interesting, uh, you know, design parts, etc. Uh, you know, the, the, well, there's actually no jimping on these parts, which it is on this one. Well, anyway, uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, a really beefy option, uh, a, a lot lower, a lot more slim of an option. Um, so if what you're looking for is, you know, a, a well, a survival knife of sorts uh, that is on, you know, lighter, slimmer, uh, semi-smaller size, then this could be a, a good option to go with. And, and, and a good, you know, stainless, uh, stainless, stainless steel as well, uh, with some, you know, pretty good edge retention uh, and, you know, well, sort of toughness as well, then this could be a, a good option. Uh, but if you're looking for a, you know, beefier knife, uh, also in a great, um, in a great stainless steel, uh, then this is perhaps something to go with. Uh, I will say that this knife was sharper. Uh, it was, you know, the better batoner. Uh, this one would, like I said, it would shave uh, leg hair, which the other one didn't with the factory edge. Uh, but it's all gonna be, uh, you know, personal preferences, etc. The design you like the most, and uh, like I mentioned, I should have I should have shown this knife in the final thoughts part of this video review. Um, and I will also say that I I do prefer the Kydex sheath to the of the M311 compared to the the Sog Pillar. Uh, but that being said, you know, this is not a bad Kydex sheath. It is functional. Uh, it actually has the better, uh, in my opinion, I prefer this uh, this locking mechanism, this belt system, uh, compared to what we get on the M311 spelter. So they both have their you know pros and, and cons, uh, as with most knives, I'd say. Uh, and this is US made. For some people, that will be a important factor. It might even be the deciding factor. Whereas the M311 Spelter is made in, uh, in Czech Republic. And there's also a bit of a price difference. This one is uh, a lot cheaper than the M311 Spelter. I think this one is... I actually can't remember the price, but I'd say around $200 perhaps. Whereas the M311 Spelter is probably around... Well, I don't fully remember, like $380? something like that, perhaps even more. So uh, also some, you know, factors to, to weigh in. Uh, 
I am happy I decided to pick this knife up. It's been an you know, interesting experience. I might uh, fine tune uh, the edge a little bit. Not that it's you know, really that necessary. I'm not gonna use this knife as a, as a razor or anything, but uh, yeah, an, an interesting experience. It was long overdue that I picked up a, a SOG made knife. And uh, well, if you like what you have seen and what you've heard in this video, uh, then I guess you can feel you know confident picking this this knife up.